Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to paint a seascape with a lighthouse on a cliff. So keep watching and let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back. I'm Brian McCormick and this is Gallery Bry, where every Friday I release a new video on oil painting techniques, materials, and even art marketing. So if you want to improve your oil painting and grow your art business, make that commitment to yourself now by hitting the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the videos that come out every Friday. So with that out of the way, let's do some painting. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to describe my process for you here. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you the materials that I use and the brands that I like as well. So for this, I started by just drawing in the big shapes and I also toned the paper that I was using with a Venetian red. The client wanted a little pop of red coming through. So I did it with Venetian red. And in the world of painting, you have line, you have shape, and you have form. Line is one dimensional, shape is two dimensional, and form is three dimensional. So I kind of approach my paintings in the same way. I start off with a toned surface, and then I draw in the shapes, which has the one dimensional line. And then from there, I work in two dimensional shapes. So I try to get the biggest shapes possible, you know, the sky, the land, the water, the horizon line. And from there, I can just work down into smaller and smaller shapes as I work through the painting. So I'm really trying to work in 2D right now. As you can see, there's just some lights and there's some darks, there's some blues and there's some greens. You can kind of get a rough idea of what's going to be happening here, but you don't really know exactly, you know, what the, the final detail is going to be like. And this for me helps kind of relieve the stress of painting, of having to focus on the details because I can know that I can always do that later on. So right here, I have all the main shapes blocked in. I've got the sky, the water, the land, and then I have the lighthouse there. And then the next thing that I'm going to be doing is trying to work a little bit more in three dimensions. So I'm going to start putting in a little bit more of the midtones. I'm going to be working on, you know, some, some highlights, but not really bright highlights, maybe just lighter parts of the painting, I suppose would be a good way to describe that. I typically try and save the lightest highlights for last because just like in real life, those reflections are always going to be on the top, on the surface. And so it's kind of hard to put those in first and then paint around them. You always want to try and have those first. So if you just think of this as like a, a sphere or a ball, Put in the darker shapes first, the darker colors, the darker values, then some of the midtones, and then you put that little pop of white on for the reflective light. Now here I'm putting in some of the, the darker colors. Um, sometimes I put these in very first, sometimes I just kind of work through. So with a painting, it's a lot of give and take to try and judge the values. And typically though, if you put the darker values in first, you can know, okay, this is what I'm working from. This is my darkest dark color. This is the darkest value. And so you can judge everything off of that. You know how light the lights need to be, how the midtones need to be. So here I was just putting in the dark shadows and then I tend to paint over top of those and almost sculpt the shadows with the forms that come around them. So now I'm working on the rocks a little bit more. I'm trying to get the colors a little bit more accurate, I'm trying to get the values a little bit more accurate. I'm trying to make sure that the painting reads properly. So here I'm putting in some more of the darker shadows, which will be adjusted later on. They'll kind of get smudged down a little bit by some of the other paint, but it is definitely something that I like to try and put in as early as possible. Now, certainly, you know, again, a painting is just give and take. You might be able to put them in a little bit later, but sooner is definitely better. And from here, I'm going to start working on some more of the grass, some more of the, the rocks. I'm trying to get the midtones a little bit more, trying to get the greens a little bit more accurate. And I like to use very kind of dull greens, a little bit more earthy greens, almost like a fall color, not very bright. Here I'm just kind of adding a little bit more to the sky. 
Um, and I try to work in chunks of paint. You know, if I mix a color and I see it somewhere else that it's needed in the painting, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to that particular area. And so I'm gonna work on the lighthouse now. I think everything else is pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. So for this painting, the palette that I used was Venetian red. I used yellow ochre, Mars black, titanium white. I used a Princeton Catalyst brush, which I really, really like. It's a synthetic bristle brush. And I used some Gal Kid gel medium, which is really great. It creates an impasto effect and it dries pretty quickly. So hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Okay, hopefully that was a helpful video for you. If it was, please return the favor and leave a like and comment the word helpful in the comments down below. And if you're new, please comment new so that I can welcome you personally. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the videos that come out every Friday. So with that, hope you're doing well and we'll see you next week.